Dean, KK4DAS, is here in the Solder Smoke Shack. Very happy to have him here. We've been talking about all kinds of radio stuff. And Dean is going to tell us about a project that he's been running that I think is really amazing. He has got 20, 20 single sideband transceivers under construction by 20 guys in the Vienna Wireless Society, a local radio club. And they are successfully building 20 SSB transceivers. So just let me put some light here. Hold on. I had some lights set up before. We're very high tech here, Dean. Hold on. Okay, good. The studio lighting is studio coming on. Lighting. Excellent. There we go. That's much better. Now we, can, now we can see each other. All right. So, Dean, tell us about the project. All right. So, there's a backstory. Okay. So, the backstory is uh, my dad uh, was an amateur radio operator for 60 plus years. And um, when I was a kid, I bailed. I never, I never finished. Didn't, didn't want to learn the code, couldn't get my license. He was getting older and he was uh, starting to get uh, ill and I got my license finally. And I was able to work uh, uh, with him for the last couple of years of his life and I got hooked. I got hooked on it. And then I found you guys and I started listening to the Solder Smoke podcast and I sent you one of those emails that you get a lot of about how I wanted to build something. And you said start small and I built a a Michigan Mighty Might, and you and I got on the air, if you remember. We did. I actually heard <laughs> Dean's signal from um, Great Falls, Virginia, all the way to Falls Church, which is about three miles, I think. <laughs> Something and, like but, that. But I think it may be one of the only times that the Michigan Mighty Might has actually been heard on the air. But there's a, there's a backstory there, too, because I tried to smuggle, in violation of U.S. postal regulations, to, to Dean and the, the 3579 crystal crystal in an envelope and it should go in a box don't you know and so they summoned his wife to the post office and forced her to pay i think 37 cents in postage due exactly and scolded her for this transgression <laughs> anyway but go on so, there so, you go. so i built i built the michigan mighty might and then i was ready to build something else bigger and i sent a note to you guys and you and both uh pete and you sent me suggestions and for whatever reason, I opted to build Pete's simple sideband uh, transceiver. Always a good choice. For, for 40 meter simple side uh, uh, simple sideband uh, 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 transceiver, and um, I got started on it about a year. Well, January, and then COVID hit, and suddenly I was at home and I was on furlough, and I ramped up, and in about six weeks, I went from nothing to having. <laughs> Ah, the, ben the benefits of COVID. Good times, my friend. Good times. <laughs> to having a, a working transceiver. Every dark cloud has a silver lining. With about a billion emails between me and you and me and Pete and uh, back and forth. And I went on this learning curve that was like this. But I had a working transceiver at the end of this. And along the way, I joined the Vienna Wireless Society and became part of the club. And they were always looking for content at their meetings. Right. So I had you come on and you did a talk at one of the meetings. That's right. I remember it. It was good. Um, and then I started doing presentations on this rig that I built. And I started getting questions about, well, can we do that? Can you start a maker group? Can we start building something? And um, so we decided to do it. And then um, about two months ago, we started the first of our meetings on the the Vienna Wireless Society version of Pete's uh, simple SSB uh, transceiver. Now you guys are still meeting in Zoom, right? We meet in Zoom, right. uh, um, but as people are getting vaccinated and starting to starting to be be more social, like we are, now we get guys going to each other's houses. This is the the benefits of being vaxxed here, guys. Yeah. Dean and yeah. are both yeah. vaxxed, so here we are. Yeah, so we we got guys that are helping each other out, but we have builders who literally had never picked up a soldering iron. And then we have some EEs who want to analyze every circuit and redesign it. Um, but across that uh, scheme, now we're about eight weeks in, six of the guys now have working receivers. They're receiving 40 meters, single sideband, HF, and they are over the moon. And that is, we, Dean and I were just talking before about that happy moment where the receiver starts to work. You know, where, where Farhan told us in his instructions for the VidX20, stop, take a few days off, wait, enjoy the receiver that you've just completed before you take on the transmitter. But we also share on our Wednesday meeting our tales of woe, Bill. So, so you have to be honest. <laughs> you have so, to support each other. So, so the, the, um, the 
trash bins of Northern Virginia are littered with uh, nano VNAs, SI-5351s. That you guys have killed. You guys have killed. We have murdered them. We <laughs> released a lot of magic smoke. I myself, it, um, in an effort to show somebody something, burnt up an SI-5351 and a nano at the same time. Wow. <laughs> this is... <laughs> <laughs> so we have, we, we, one of the guys uh, Cam for EDX Don. He does videos that are delightful, and he he did one a few weeks ago called "Don't Do What Don Did." Oh, I saw that. I saw that. That's, that's really good. Yeah, like that. So we're sharing our successes. We're sharing our tales of woe. It's not just the Northern Virginians. We've got um, we've got uh, three Californians who uh, uh, who call in, and one guy in Arizona. One guy up in New Jersey. The beauty of Zoom is we're able to do these things together as a group. It's just it's just been a lot of fun. And I mean, the, the, the amazing thing is that you're taking Pete's design, and and he's he's such a he's such a creative force, such a genius with this. And so, what's his involvement been? So so early on, I blind copied him on our reflector group. So he's receiving all the emails, and I didn't tell anybody that he was receiving all the emails. But Pete can't. Um, hold it in so when the questions come out Pete responds and he helps and he helps and he gives guidance and he encourages uh, and he berates a little bit <laughs> some of these guys might not realize that, that they're dealing with the designer the, the actual right. guy who put this on a piece of paper that's, and made this thing that, that's right that's right and and who has built 50 plus transceivers and, more than anyone alive I yeah think. and knows everything there is to know about everything that can go wrong in this process um, but it's been really great because he's also been really encouraging for the guys and helping, you know, I, my knowledge, you know, even though I've had a steep learning curve, it plateaus. And, and there gets to a point where they ask a question that I cannot answer. And Pete's there kind of hiding in the background to answer the question and, and uh, help, 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 help move it along. Yeah, he's, he's an amazing resource. He's a real treasure. He's, you know, he and, and Farhan in terms of, you know, being the creative force beside, behind a lot of this stuff, it's really just, just amazing. So what's the next step? Where do, you, where do you go with the project now? All right, so we are, so, so Pete's design is wonderful because when you build the receiver, you have 80% of the transceiver done because the entire IF is bi-directional. It uses right. these bi-directional plus the amplifiers either side of the filter, we're using a um, SI5351 and an Arduino for the controller. Um, all credit to Pete. I'm a professional software engineer. I kind of got rid of his software and replaced it with my own. <laughs> I've only told him one time that um, I'm as good a, 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 a RF engineer as he is a software engineer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough. So, so, but along the way, um, I took his simple SSB and I enhanced it so it now has cat control. So you can do F8. I saw that. Uh, it has a S meter. It has some things like cool display. things like that. Yeah. Cool, cool displays. All of this kind of stuff. So now we're building the amplifiers. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a, a bi-directional amplifier stage, also on a receive and transmit, a transmit driver and an IRF 510 final. And Pete has agreed to do the lecture for the last module. The, the, the when will that be? Them, but it'll be uh, a little less than a month. All right. So, so you're gonna, how many do you think you're going to finish? How many are going to gonna finish? I am hoping we have about a dozen on the air by field day. And then so, the rest will eventually catch up? Uh, so we've had two kind of drop out okay. since we started, but only two. So down to about 18. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, one is a father-son pair, so they're building one rig. Okay. So so we'll get 12 or 13 out of 16 done, I think. This must be something of a record because you hear about group builds, and it's usually much smaller numbers than this. So this is really, really a good thing. And it's actually good that it's taken place in Northern Virginia, because there's 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 a lot of technical activity here. I'm sure this will yeah. this will spread, and other people will get involved. So it's really good. Do you have any thoughts of uh, all getting on the air at the same time? I do. I'm trying to figure out how we make it happen. You know, because we're they're 40 meters, right. so we got to be relatively close to get ground wave to work. Otherwise, it's going to skip right. Like you and I have tried on 40, and, and even right. though we're just a yeah. few miles away, sometimes we can't even hear each other. So we'll try. Um, but I'd like to do I'd like to do our own Vienna Wireless. I worked all uh, simple sideband. Worked work all simple sideband. <laughs> yeah, 
that'd be fantastic. <laughs> I, I think it'd be great. What a great project. All right. Any 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 final thoughts on this one? Anything you want to share with the with the Solder Smoke listeners? Yeah, there is actually, and that is the the concept of starting small and building on what you already have uh, have learned to when you go to the next step. So you had me start with uh, Michigan Mighty Might. I had the guys start with an audio amplifier, yeah. one transistor, an LM386, and some components. And the guys were frightened, some of them, of doing that. They couldn't figure out how to do the layouts, couldn't, you know, didn't know. But the instant they got audio coming out of an amplifier and they could just hear a buzz out of the speaker, they were hooked. Well, that, right? that, and that is a way of kind of addressing that you need to build something smaller first by taking the first by taking it stage by stage you're in a, in essence building a smaller circuit first even though it's part of a larger well machine. i gotta ask where's the schematic yeah. and the answer is that there isn't one <laughs> there are schematics for each module right but there is no one page schematic that there's a block diagram that shows all, how, how everything right. interacts right. but there is no massive schematic you and i were talking earlier about you know, if you can't read the schematic and know where the modules are, you probably shouldn't start on the project. Right. Well, we take that um, we take that burden away from you <laughs> by saying, "Here's the audio amplifier." Just think about that. <laughs> now, now, Dean, one of the things I really remembered about your simple SSB was how you had it all laid out on a board, yeah, al alfresco style. Are are your are the builders in this project going to do it that way? Some of them are. Some of them are more advanced uh, mechanically, and they're actually building for a, a, a cabinet. Um, I did not have access to 3D printer technology or anything like that. Well, some of the guys are really good at that, and they've already made like their front panels okay. with the 3D printers. Yeah, yeah. And so they're, they're kind of building. But they're also learning that if you start designing it that way too soon, you run out of room. <laughs> you run out of room. And not only that, as Pete has told us many times, one of the advantages of being in an alfresco mode was that it'll work fine out on the board, and then when you try to put it all together in a box, that's when the problems so arise. So I'm, I'm a year into this project. I'm still operating it on a piece of plywood, um, but I'm now gradually building new um, uh, modules one at a time. This is a, this is a CNC cut board that I made Beautiful. for the IF module, and so I'm now gradually replacing my original build with these, with an eye to, I actually want to put it in a cabinet and actually have it <laughs> beautiful, <laughs> have it operate. But I like having it on. I like having it on the uh, open. Oh, on the piece I, of I did too. I, I, I mean, I, there were so many times where I had the thing on the board and it, it was like with a tear in my eye that I put it in the box and it, it well, hid well, it away. Well, because you can see it, and once you've built every, once you've placed every component on every module, you know where all the signals are. Right, just from looking at it, you That's don't need it. you don't need a diagram anyway. You know where every single right. no, signal no, should no. be in this room. There, there, there's, there's some great great virtue in that. I, I think I sent you a cartoon with the guy sitting down and the thing was out on the bedboard. But I love the term alfresco. I, yeah, I, I, I don't know who came up with it, me or Peter. But it, it's a wonderful term. All right. Well, that, that's fantastic. That is a great project, and and it's and, and I'm sure it's going to be like a model for other other groups. So three cheers for Vienna Wireless Builders Group, and uh, these things are going to be on the air. Are any of these guys already attempting to to go beyond the IRF five ten power level? Well, so I mentioned we have a couple of double E's in the group, and they're looking at every circuit, you know under a microscope saying, well, we can improve this, we can improve that, we go faster. One of them wants to get it on CW because it's it's designed for phone. And so we've talked about all that, but I'm discouraging them from doing any of that until they get the basic yeah, don't, transceiver don't, working. Don't start adding it bells and whistles until you get the thing, yeah, get be, the thing going. Well, it, it's called simple SSB for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> and well, and that's, it's, it's interesting because SSB is not simple. Right. right. So simple SSB is saying something. And you're right, adding additional features. So yeah. so the thing that makes it possible for first-time builders is Pete's choice of some key components where he took away the complexity. Mm -hmm. So we have an SI5351 that generates your VFO and your BFO. You don't have to build those. We have uh, obviously the Arduino for the controller. We have commercial mixers, the ADE1s. We have a commercial filter. So a lot of the places where you fail and a build like this, Pete took away from us. <laughs> and and you, cheers. And you still get to build the entire rig yourself. <laughs>
<laughs> Three cheers for Pete Giuliano. Okay, Dean, real Thank good. You. Thanks for telling us about this rig. I'm going to put this up on the Solder Smoke Podcast.